Hey, it's Joseph here. Today we are reviewing WS66. I have unboxed this specific laptop on the last video, so please do check it out if you haven't already. And let's go ahead and dive in to fully review this unit. And as a full disclosure, whilst I am provided with this unit for review purpose, I'm gonna have to send it back to MSI once it is done. And also I am not sponsored in any way. So anything that I'm about to say is based on my experience and observation and research. And with that out of the way, let's get into the specification. So this specific one is a 15 inch workstation lineup from MSI and it is named as WS66 and WS65 was the predecessor of this unit and WS75 is a 17 inch model pretty much the similar spec as this one. Other than the size difference, one of the biggest difference is the overall color. This one is named as Space Gray and it is looking like this. It's almost black to the camera but as you can see, it has some reflection and you'll get the subtle logo that's on the laptop. And then it is the same color all around the laptop. So it is looking quite sleek and nice. And whilst this is smaller than the 17 inch model, you can expect a similar performance if not better. The exact model of this unit is WS66 10TMT and it has a CPU i9-10980HK with a base clock of 3.1 gigahertz and it has 8 cores with 16 threads and it has Nvidia Quadro RTX 5000 Max-Q variant and it has 16 gigabytes of VRAM so it is certainly plenty. And in terms of the storage, it has one terabyte of SSD storage, which is fast. And then it is really good to see 64 gigabytes of RAM. I think this is the most that I have seen on a laptop so far. My desktop doesn't even have 64. And this number is especially useful for the workstations because your large projects are gonna really dependent on the RAM size that your system has. So it really likes to eat up all of the system memory that you have available and I have run out of 32 gigabytes in the past so having 64 gigabytes would definitely give you peace of mind and if you run out of memory you simply cannot run that specific task so it is going to be quite important to keep up with your memory and it is good to see plenty of memory on this machine so based on all the specs of this machine it is quite apparent it is meant for the professionals who's needing to do all the large projects and complex tasks that they need to do. So again, let's look at the overall design. Everything is kept quite minimalistic on top. Just at a reflection, you can catch the logo and it is looking quite dark on the screen, but it has a slight blue tint as well since it is space gray. And as you can see, it is kind of like a boxy design with a little stepping towards the back where the hinge is. And the body is actually cold to touch because it is made out of metal. And I have noticed that on the front, the bottom front here is not metal. It is actually plastic for some reason, but that's the only place that I was able to find sort of the plastic construction of this laptop. And the overall size of this device is 14 inches by 9.75 inches by 0.75 inches. And then the weight is 4.6 pounds according to the spec sheet. And whilst we are looking at outside of the device, let's go ahead and look at the ports. Starting from the right side, there is a headphone combo jack and then USB-C port, full size SD card reader, ethernet jack, and then some air vents on one corner. And then moving on to the other side, the air vent on the left, and then DC power jack with a Thunderbolt 3 port. And it is also capable of charging via power delivery and full size HDMI port, and then USB type A port. And on the front, there's nothing. And also on the back, there are some vents on either side. And in the center, it is kind of written as workstation WS. 
66. And moving on to the bottom of the device, there are some plastic feet to keep it off the ground so your laptop can breathe through this air grill that is available at the bottom of the device. And also there are screws that are exposed so you can unscrew them to get access inside of the laptop as well. And on the front, there's no ports, but there's a slight sort of indentation for you to put your finger and then lift the panel. So let's go ahead and do that. And the hinge feels quite solid. It is hinged on the either side of the laptop and it is actually capable of laying flat as well. So you can go all the way down and I like having a lot of angle available for the laptop. So I really appreciate this touch. So here you can see the thin bezel on the either side and the top where the camera is with a much thicker bezel at the bottom with the MSI logo. And actually this is a touch screen. So I am able to adjust the screen brightness like this. And I find myself doing screenshots like this. And then once that shows up, and one snippet comes up like this, I'm able to touch and say, oh, these points are not working. And then I can just copy and paste this image onto email for me to comment on drawings quite easily. And I have tested various pens and styluses for this touch screen and only the finger seems to work. So fingers only. And whilst we are on the subject of the screen, I wanted to mention that the screen is 1080p. And some of you might have concerns for just 1080p for your 15 inch laptop. I personally think regular viewing distance of let's say two feet, I can't really discern individual pixels on the device, so I find it adequate. If you really want additional sharpness, you can kind of jump it up to 1440p, but that skew isn't really available. But there's actually UHD screen, 4K screen available for this skew as well. So if you want additional resolution, Solution, you can go up to 4k and also the color accuracy improves to Adobe RGB of 100% however I prefer kind of lower resolution because introducing more pixels to the screen actually makes your laptop think much harder and push a lot more graphics so it is going to consume more power off of your battery as well as introducing more heat to the machine therefore more noise of the fan so you just kind of have to pick which would be better for yourself. For me, I find 1080p with a touch screen to be more adequate for my purpose. And speaking of the noise of the fan, it is not really high pitch whine, it is sort of a low hum. The fan is actually on right now, so let me see if you guys could pick it out. Or perhaps move the device closer. And because we have packed a lot of power into this device, the fan is going to turn on more frequently compared to other sort of weaker devices. So let's talk about the sound that this device is actually meant to make, which is the speakers. The sounds are actually coming from the grill that are positioned on the either side of the touchpad and it is sort of firing at you rather than firing down. So it sounds pretty good to me, although I don't really use speakers. So I'll leave that up to you to judge. And I also wanted to mention the webcam. So let's go ahead and launch the camera. So let's see if you can see yourself there. And it is 720p webcam. It will do the job of joining video calls and showing your face and actually doing a good job of covering up your blemishes since it doesn't show all that detail. And let's actually talk about the battery life of this device. I was actually able to last about two and a half hours doing SketchUp 3D modeling. So I assume it's gonna be sort of give or take from there. If you're doing more intense work such as rendering, then you can expect it to last lesser than that. But on an idle test, I was able to get eight hours out of this device. Therefore, it can last much longer if you were to do lighter tasks. And whilst we are talking 
talking about power, let's talk about charging of this device. I'm really glad that this device is capable of being charged from the Thunderbolt that's on the side. So I can just simply connect this and then the laptop is going to be charged. And I actually have tested different chargers, various wattage, anything on a 60 to 65 watt wattage. It doesn't really charge this device. But if you charge this laptop with 90 to 100 watt power delivery chargers, then it will certainly work. So something like this one from Rev Power, which has 90 watt output, it will be able to charge this laptop. So you can just kind of combine these sort of cable and the charger, you'll be able to charge this laptop without a problem. So mind you, this is the original charger and then the 90 watt charger. It is much easier to carry this. So I'd rather leave this one on my desk so that I can just charge my device whenever I come into the office or home office and then just carry this around in my bag. And just as your reference, the original charger has 230 watt of power output. So if you're pushing your laptop to a full throttle, trickle charging with a 90 watt charger may not fully charge your device and actually drain off of your battery as well. Then you will really need this charger. So for those occasions, you're gonna have to carry that one. So let's go ahead and look at this side of the laptop. On the top, there is actually air vent to allow laptop to breathe and then just kind of usual keyboard layout. Only weird thing that I have noticed is the fact that on the top right hand corner, there's a delete key to the right of backspace. So I found myself kind of accidentally hitting that a few times, as well as the power button is on the top right hand corner. However, even if you hit it, nothing happens. So, which is a good thing that MSI have done. Backspace and the delete key, I can kind of miss hit. I guess something that you can get used to if you were to use this device daily. And I also wanted to mention the fact that the full size arrow key is positioned here and then up arrow key is tucked on the right side of the right shift key. And I guess this is something that you can get used to as well, but I personally have prefer sort of the squash down arrow key that some other manufacturers do. So there's actually LED indicator on the power button. So kind of allows you the state of this machine when it's sleeping, it shows sort of the orange LED indicator whilst on it is white as you can see and on the function keys on the top there are different LED indicators to let you know the status of the laptop right now I've got the speaker off the mute so it's got that on as well as function lock so it's got an indicator on the escape key so let me go ahead and test out the keyboard here is what the keyboard sounds like So overall the keyboard feels fine. It is kind of chiclet style keyboards and you wouldn't have problems sort of typing on it. It feels kind of smooth and nice as well. And on the bottom is gonna be the touchpad. As always, there's a fingerprint sensor on the top left hand corner if you care for the security measures. And the touchpad is quite wide with glass surface and it feels solid. So I like that in terms of the touchpad, but as always, I kind of have a complaint about it being too wide as my right hand's palm always rests on the touchpad. Therefore, it's prone to accidental touches. But then again, MSI have done quite a good palm rejection, so accidental touches are not really there. However, it still doesn't prevent accidental clicks by just resting your hand quite firmly onto the laptop. So that is just something that you're gonna have to deal with. You can't really fully rest your right hand onto the touchpad. Instead, you're gonna have to learn to kind of lift it up a little bit or you can actually turn off the touchpad by using the function key. And once you do that, the touchpad doesn't work. So you can fully rest your hand as long as you have a mouse on hand, but that is something that you're gonna have to deal with if you're up for a long typing session. And because this laptop is equipped with NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000, it contains 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So you can load complex and large real-time rendering scenes from Enscape, 
Lumion and Tui Motion onto the device and it wouldn't have problem chewing that through. And you can also tether this device to VR to have the VR experience as well. As you can see, working with Sketchafile is not a problem at all. I can go to different scenes like this that it shouldn't have a problem and typically sketchup isn't all that difficult to run let's go ahead and up a notch with running enscape so this here now is the enscape i'm actually using 3d mouse behind the screen to just kind of navigate this model myself i can just kind of navigate through this model here i think there is other part of the model as well so let me just zoom by and show you this setting as well. Navigation is a little bit difficult since I am not necessarily facing the screen, but that should give you an idea of how smooth this handles. And mind you, this laptop is not connected to power anything. It is actually going off of its battery, as well as the fan is being managed quite well as well. So this is being handled as if it's not much of a problem at all. Especially the 1080p screen is much easier to run and let's change the settings just to kind of up things a bit. So first the rendering quality was at high. I can put it up to ultra if I wanted to and see if it makes any difference. It is not particularly heavy scene, but as you can see, it's not having any problem handling it. Why don't we also try a different model as well and move on to Revit side. So this is a model from Enscape example model and I am also able to orbit, zoom in and out without problem. Let me turn on the section box so I can just kind of demonstrate the responsiveness of cutting sections, 3D sections. Let me go ahead and hit the render button through Enscape. Now we are going to put this through some rendering tests. So I can just use the shift to go faster. And there you go. This is how the rendering looks like. But I can also just navigate into this house here. So let's look at the kitchen area. as well as living. Let's go upstairs, shall we? Now I can hear the fan coming up. Rotate it around, perhaps come out this way and then float out to the space as well. And I actually have run some benchmark with Enscape. So this is the graph and for some reason Probably because of the recent graphic card driver as well as the Enscape and everything, it is kind of optimized in some way. So the same graphics card that is RTX Quadro 5000 Max Q variant on WS66 was running much faster than WS75 or even WS65. So there is not particular reason because the hardware should be the same. Maybe it is tuned slightly better. However, I think it is just because it's got more recent driver than the old versions and the Enscape is better optimized nowadays. So you're seeing a little bit of speed bump there. And in comparison, I have compared to my own desktop, which is RTX 2080 Super, and it is pretty much on par with some variants. So that's what you are seeing on this graph that I am showing. And since we are on Enscape, let me go ahead and connect my VR headset to test out the VR workflow as well. And for that, I kind of need this laptop to be plugged onto the power. The reason for that is because if this laptop is not being powered, meaning draining from battery, or even drawing power from 100 watt power delivery, it's not gonna run on its best performance possible. Therefore, I'm just connecting with the original charger so that it can show the best performance possible. With that, let me grab the headset. And as always, my current choice of VR headset is actually Oculus Quest. I know there is a second version, 
I haven't really had my hands on one just yet. I'm sticking with Quest 1 because I still think this will suffice for most of architectural VR workflows. Quest 2 has some headband problem so I'm sticking with my original Quest for now. So I've got this cable here which is USB-A port on one end and USB-C. It's a trusty old cable from Anchor. It always has work for me so I'm just using this and connect that onto the headset itself. Grab the controllers and make sure both Oculus and Steam is installed on your machine. I've done that in prior. Okay, so from here, I can just click on enable VR button and then make sure I am connected via Quest Link from my headset. So let me go ahead and make sure of that. And once I do that, I can actually go to virtual desktop. So I also see my desktop and controlling mouse here. And then I can enable the screen. So you guys see what I'm seeing through my headset. So this is what we are seeing. Looks pretty good, right? But I am able to just kind of jump over there if I wanted to, turn around, and then perhaps stand in this corner, and then admire the kitchen. And then perhaps I can go over there in the living room, maybe stand on this corner, and admire the living space. And obviously the fan was kicking off because it's doing a lot of tasks. But as we have disconnected it and closed down the Enscape side, the fan is coming back down. And I also have run benchmarking on Lumion. It has a built-in tool and the graph looks like this. So comparably, it looks really good, especially because of the RAM and an improved CPU. Okay, and let's go ahead and move on to the V-Ray CPU rendering benchmark scores. This is done through V-Ray's own tool, the benchmarking tool so that I can gauge different devices scores. And the more number you see here is actually better. So the total score for WS66K samples is 11,540 samples. So it tells you how similar it is performing compared to WS75. So i9-10900HK is really working and doing its job. Okay, so with those benchmarking results, it is clear that this laptop is capable of matching desktop's performance or even better at times. Okay, so this laptop is really well performing laptop, but what about the price of the laptop? And this laptop is definitely not cheap because this specific SKU is priced at $39.99. So you're expected to pay quite a lot. $4,000 for a laptop is definitely not a cheap price. However, if you're looking for a workstation class laptop that is to be replacing your desktop or even perform better, then this is one of the laptops that's gonna get your job done whilst looking quite nice as well. Obviously you have to consider all the premium hardware that is packaged well packed inside for thermal and power efficiency, that sort of thing, as well as some of the peripherals you're gonna have to carry around if you were to kind of haul around your desktop, like a screen or the keyboard and a mouse, and all of that is well packaged into this 15 inch format that is definitely carryable in your backpack. So if you're looking for those type of laptop, then here's the right answer for you. If you have enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching my video. I'll see you next time. Bye.